Hello and welcome to another NGen Math 7 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler and today we're going to be doing Unit 2, Lesson 5 on more work subtracting signed numbers. Now, in the last lesson you essentially saw two things with subtraction. One, if you subtracted a larger positive number from a smaller positive number, like 3 minus 7, you got a negative answer, and that negative was just the opposite of what you would have gotten had the subtraction been reversed. So in that example, 3 minus 7 is negative 4. You also saw how to subtract a negative from another number by simply changing it to adding a positive. And we're going to see a lot of that today, where we specifically look to change all subtraction problems into addition. Let's get right into it in the first exercise. Here we go. Changing subtraction into adding of opposites. Exercise number one. For each of the following subtractions, find the result and then state an equivalent addition problem. All right. Well, A, B, and C in this problem are all really review from the last lesson's homework. So what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to find the result of each one of these and then rewrite the problem so that we don't have subtraction, not 10 minus 2, but we have 10 plus something. Same thing here and same thing here. Why don't you go ahead and do that? All right. Well, the first one's not very hard. Eight mi or 10 minus 2 is obviously just positive 8. But that does have an equivalent in addition. That would be the same as 10 plus negative 2, right? So 10 minus 2 is the same as 10 plus negative 2. Now B and C are really what we were just talking about in terms of if I subtract a negative, then I end up adding the opposite. So 6 minus negative 5 is the same as 6 plus 5, which is 11, and that's actually that equivalent addition problem. 6 plus 5. Now here, I really want you to realize, you know, if I have something like negative 10 minus negative 3, right, you can easily think of that as if I've got 10 negative 1s and I take 3 of them and I get rid of them, what do I have left? Well, I have 7 negatives left. And that's equivalent to negative 10 plus positive 3. Now notice, in each of these cases, when I change that subtraction, right, into an addition, what I end up adding is the opposite or the additive inverse of the number I was subtracting. So 10 minus 2 becomes 10 plus negative 2. 6 minus negative 5 becomes 6 plus positive 5. Negative 10 minus negative 3 becomes negative 10 plus positive 3. We can always change subtraction into the addition of the opposite of what we were trying to subtract. Now there's actually one scenario we haven't looked at yet, and that's specifically what happens when we have a negative number and we subtract a positive from it. So let's look at that one last scenario and make sure it still works the way that we want it to in terms of this pattern. Let's do it. One final subtraction problem, exercise number two. Consider the subtraction problem negative 2 minus 3. Letter A asks us to add enough zero-sum pairs to the diagram in order to subtract positive 3. So let's talk about this a little bit. I mean, all by itself this is a little weird, right? Because what we have is we've got two negatives and we want to somehow subtract three positives. But there's no positives sitting here at all for us to subtract. So, right, in letter A, we do what this, this little trick we've been playing quite a bit, which is we're going to add enough zeros here, all right, zero sum pairs, zeros, so that we can get rid of three positives. Well, let me uh, put a zero here. That's zero. That's zero. And that's zero, right? We still have, right, a net negative two, because we have negative two plus zero plus zero plus zero. But now if I want to subtract off positive 3, that's easy enough, right? So what we get is negative 2 minus 3 is negative 5, all right? Negative 2 minus 3 is negative 5. And we do that by just adding up 
adding enough zeros on there that we can throw away those positive three. We can subtract them. Now, letter C, though, asks us to fill in some blanks. This is equivalent to what addition problem? Well, see if you can fill in those blanks on that addition problem to make sure that it fits the pattern that we've been seeing. Right? Well, negative 2 minus positive 3 seems to be the same as negative 2 plus negative 3. Right? And it does fit the pattern, right? Remember, the pattern was when we subtract off a number, we can change that subtraction into an addition of the opposite of what we're subtracting. So negative 2 minus 3 is the same as negative 2 plus negative 3, which gives us negative 5. That being said, why don't you pause the video and do negative 6 minus 10. All right, here we go. Negative 6 minus 10 would be the same as negative 6 plus negative 10. Negative 6 plus negative 10 is then a grand total of negative 16. Now you might ask, well, why should we change subtraction into addition? All right. And the main reason we should, subtract, we should change subtraction into addition, not all the time. I mean, look, I'm not going to change 8 minus 2 into addition of 8 plus negative 2. I'm never going to do that. I'm just going to be like, hey, 8 minus 2 is 6. Right? But addition has a lot of properties that subtraction doesn't. The fact that it's commutative, we can flip-flop its order. The fact that it's associative, when I have three numbers added together, I can choose the two that I want to add together first. All of these are important properties that addition has that subtraction doesn't. So we want to be able to change subtraction into addition by adding the opposite of what we're subtracting. Let's play around with this a little bit more. All right, converting subtraction into addition. Any subtraction can be changed into addition by adding the opposite in sign of the number being subtracted. In symbolic form, a minus b is equal to a plus negative b. All right. Let's take a look at exercise three and go through a bunch of these. For each of the following, change the subtraction problem into an equivalent addition problem and evaluate. All right, so let's do this together. Nine minus negative three, right, will be the same as nine plus the opposite, which is positive three. So nine minus negative three is 12. On the other hand, in B, negative 12 minus 15 will be the same as negative 12 plus negative 15. Right, and that's a real nice way to think about it because if I've got 12 negatives and 15 negatives, then in total I have 27 negatives. A lot easier to think about it that way than to say, well, if I have 12 negatives and I subtract off 15 positives, what do I have? It's kind of weird. It's like saying if I have 12 oranges and I subtract off 15 apples. You know, it's just confusing. All right, let's take a look at letter C. I've got 14 minus negative 2. Now, again, if you're able to just say, well, I have 14 negatives and I get rid of two of them, so therefore I have 12, awesome. But it is kind of nice to be able to say, well, negative 14 minus negative 2 would be the same as negative 14 plus a positive 2. So two of those will, positive 2s will cancel with two negative 2s and give me negative 12. All right, finally, fractions. Ugh, fractions. But at least they have a common denominator. I have 3 quarters minus 5 quarters. Well, in that case, I could change that into 3 quarters plus negative 5 quarters. And remember, whenever we add two fractions, we simply leave the denominator the same, right? So we've still got quarters. And now we think, what is 3 plus negative 5? Well, 3 plus negative 5 will be negative 2 quarters, or reduced down negative 1 half. All right, so subtracting numbers can always be changed into adding. Leave the first number the same. This is very similar to like dividing fractions, isn't it? Like where you keep the first number the same, you change the division into multiplication, and then you multiply by the reciprocal. Right? Here it's very similar. Right? We keep the, the, the number the same, we, the first number the same, we change the subtraction into an addition, and then we add the opposite instead of negative 3, positive 3. All right.
Let's keep working with these. Here we go, combining more than two signed numbers. This is where it's really helpful, okay? Let's take a look at exercise number 14. Consider the calculation negative 14 minus five plus eight minus negative 12. Letter A asks us to rewrite this expression using only addition. All right, I'd like you to pause the video right now, rewrite this expression. You don't have to evaluate it. We'll do that in letter B, but rewrite this expression without any subtraction, just simply adding of opposites. Pause the video now and go ahead and do that. All right, let's do it. So we have negative 14, we're gonna leave that one alone, negative 14, but then minus five, we can change into adding negative five. All right, then we have plus eight, which is fine, then we have minus negative 12, which can be changed into plus 12. All right, letter B now says, to evaluate this sum by combining all positive and then all negative first, and then summing the final two results. All right, so let's go through it. We've got negative 14 plus negative five and eight plus 12. So we can combine these two Right? In fact, maybe I'll write this out in sort of its associative form. We'll have the sum of those negatives and then the sum of those positives. Negative 14 plus negative 5 is negative 19. 8 plus 12 is positive 20. And negative 19 and positive 20 leave us with the number 1. All right. Now again, you could do that other ways. You could say, well, negative 14 minus five is negative 19. Negative 19 plus eight is negative 11, and negative 11 minus negative 12 is positive one. Uh, it gets a little confusing there, right? It's better to change it all in terms of addition, combine the negatives, combine the positives, and then take that net negative, that net positive, and put them together. All right? So. Let's do a little bit of that in the last exercise, exercise number five. Let's rearrange each of the following calculations so they involve addition only. Then determine the final sum. Show any intermediate steps. All right, let's do letter A together. Have you do letter B on your own just to see how you're doing. Letter A. All right, we've got eight minus three plus negative two minus 10 minus negative four. All right, so nothing we're gonna do with that eight, but then we're gonna change it into a plus negative three then we have a plus negative two. Now that subtraction by 10, I'm gonna change that into plus negative 10. There's my 10. And then that subtraction of negative four, I'm gonna change that into an addition of positive four. Again, if that's a little bit confusing, maybe we put parentheses around the negative numbers just to kind of separate them from the adding and subtracting. So now let me put the positives together. That's just the eight and the four. Then I'm gonna put the negatives together. That's negative three plus negative two plus negative 10. Eight plus four is a positive 12. Negative three and negative two is negative five. Negative 10 gives me negative 15. And now 12 plus negative 15, we have enough cancellation there to leave us with negative three. All right. So now what I'd like you to do is pause the video and do the same to letter B. All right, let's go through it. Again, we have negative six right from the beginning, which we're not gonna do anything with, minus 14. So I'm gonna change that into plus negative 14, then plus seven. A subtraction of negative three will become an addition of positive three, and a subtraction of negative eight will become an addition, I'm sorry, a subtraction of eight will become an addition of negative eight. We'll maybe separate those negatives in parentheses. Again, we have a positive seven and a positive three that are gonna combine with addition. We have a negative six, a negative 14, and a negative eight that are gonna combine with addition. Seven plus three is 10. Six plus 14 is 20, plus eight is 28, but they're negative. And 10 plus negative 28 cancels and gives me negative 18. All right, if you got negative 18, then you're golden there, it's perfect. All right, so again, this idea of taking a subtraction and changing it into addition, 
particularly helpful in these kind of situations. Let's wrap this up. One of the most important things of all in terms of operations with signed numbers is this idea of equivalence between subtraction and addition. The idea that we can take any subtraction problem, anything whatsoever, and change it into an addition problem by adding the opposite of what we're subtracting is really, really critical. We'll use that in calculations all the time from this lesson going forward. I'd like to thank you for joining me for another NGen Math 7 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler, and until next time, keep thinking and keep solving problems. Thank you.